Good evening and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. It's great to have you with us tonight here at St. Mary by the Sea. Over 100 people from the ages of 2 to 80 years old were asked to fill in the blank for this statement. My story is. From the voices of the different generations, hear their answers. My story is amazing. Just beginning. A wee bit messy with lots of love. Privileged. Hopeful. Full of silliness. Still unfolding. Long but good, one of resilience, incomplete, thank goodness, multilingual, a work in progress. My story is not just mine, it's tied to yours. Tonight we tell the story that we tell every year, the story of Christ's birth, the story of love made flesh. It's a story that weaves through every generation. 
It's a story that picks up the bits and pieces of our narrative and braids us together. So tonight, we light the Christ candle, because from generation to generation, our story belongs to God. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. As a kid, I used to think the prayer of confession was scary. I thought it was a moment designed to make me feel guilty, intended for cast down eyes, and shoulders hung low. But that's not it at all. The prayer of confession is an invitation. It's an opportunity to say, this is who I've been, and this is who I long to be. So let us pray together. Let us be truth tellers. Let us hold our heads high and speak honestly before God and one another. This is easy to do when we are surrounded by a God who delights in us. So friends, let us pray. Holy God, we admit we don't fully understand the Christmas story. We're not familiar with angel choruses. We have not walked many miles to be counted in a census, and we don't always hear your voice in our dreams. We don't fully understand this story, so we admit, sometimes we hesitate to tell it. Instead of running out into the streets to shout that there's a love bigger than we could ever imagine, we whisper the good news. 
Instead of throwing open the doors and inviting people in, we simply leave them unlocked, hoping folks will figure it out. Instead of telling the next generation why this night matters so much, we stay quiet, afraid of creating pressure. Forgive us for our silence. Forgive us for our hesitation. Forgive us for the moments when we fail to share your good news. Plant the story of love so deep in our bones that we cannot help but share it from generation to generation. Amen. Friends, repeat after me. No matter where we go, no matter where we go, no matter what we say, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter what we do, we belong to God. We belong to God. We are held. We are held. We are loved. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. Amen. chapter 2 verses 1 to 20. About that time Emperor Augustus gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. These first records were made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed. So Joseph had to leave Nazareth and Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Mary was engaged to Joseph and travelled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay because there was no room for them in the inn. That night, in the fields near Bethlehem, some shepherds were guarding their sheep. All at once an angel came down to them from the Lord, 
and the brightness of the Lord's glory flashed around them. The angels were frightened, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. This very day in King David's hometown, a Saviour was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will know who he is because you will find him dressed in baby clothes and lying on a bed of hay. Suddenly, many other angels came down from heaven and joined in praising God. They said, Praise God in heaven. Peace on earth to everyone who pleases God. After the angels had left and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby lying on a bed of hay. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they told his parents what the angel had said about him. Everyone listened and was surprised. But Mary kept thinking about all this and wondering what it meant. As the shepherds returned to their sheep, they were praising God and saying wonderful things about him. Everything they had said and heard was just as the angel had said. How God Shows Up by the Reverend Lyle Gwynne Garrity Inspired by Luke 2, 1-20 It's a silk painting with a digital drawing and collage. Lyle writes, As I return to Jesus' birth story, my imagine leads me to wonder, Apart from Elizabeth, did Mary have support throughout her pregnancy? Was her own mother involved? Did she have generational trauma she needed to grieve? Did the stress of their travels to Bethlehem cause her labour to happen sooner than expected? As she laboured, did a midwife come? Was she afraid? In this image is if looking past a curtain, we peer into this threshold moment when excruciating pain gives way to ecstatic joy as Mary draws her baby to her chest and he takes his first breath. As Mary holds her baby, additional hands reach out to support them both. Maybe these are the hands of strangers, of Joseph, or of a midwife who was summoned. Perhaps they are simply the hands of angels. Lau continues, Each year we tell the story because it is raw with joy, pain and the complexities of being human. No matter how your story is unfolding, may you find that this sacred story holds space for you. For this is how God shows up, in a child who cries, in hands that hold, in human flesh, in life and death. Ponder by Hannah Garrity, inspired by Luke 2, 15-21, in its paper lace with watercolour. Hannah writes, the hope that Mary was pondering inspired the concept and flow in this watercoloured paper lace work. Are you, as I am, most taken by the sense that Mary has given birth to the hopes and dreams of a people who are hurting? During the pandemic, as I watched the news, I saw so much creatively bubbling up. I saw people imagining a world that could be, a world that should be. The hope that was emerging was palpable. Then as a teacher, I went back into the classroom this year. Hope seemed absent among my students, among the faculty, among the parents. I began to research the science of hope. Perhaps it's teachable, I wondered. It turns out there is a whole department at the University of Oklahoma dedicated to the study of hope. I watched a TED talk by their lead professor, Chan Hellman, entitled The Science and Power of Hope. The next TED talk I wa watched was Hope is the Most Powerful Force in the World by Sovening Hurin who runs a school for girls, putting the concepts of science of hope into action. He says that he focuses on one person. There is no other way. One person focusing on one person at a time, creating space for hope. One person in a family was given a scholarship to a girls' school. She reached back and pulled her siblings forward into higher education as well. The ripple effect of hope was power of which she spoke. I was already putting this one person at a time focus into action before I saw these TED Talks. However, understanding more about the science of hope has helped me realise that my work is making a difference. I'm beginning to believe that the one-on-one -on -one moments I am making time for every few minutes, all day long, 
are having effect on my students. Relationships are improving. Students are reconnecting with their studies. Students are speaking up about their needs. It is hard to see the benefits of this last one because there is so much need, so much pain amongst them now. It feels like constant failure, but there is hope in hope. I want to be able to teach hope. The students need to know how to generate it, how to create it, how to expand hope into their daily lives, one person at a time. In the midst of a difficult life, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Luke 2, 19. One of these treasures was the hope that her womb had brought forth for the world to return to again and again, and to pass on like a ripple, one person at a time. The story of Christmas is one I'm sure almost all of you will have heard before. Our time of Advent and our journey leading up to the birth of Jesus and God's first-hand ministry amongst us comes full circle tonight. The waiting is over. God and Jesus has been born among us and God will now work with us in a way God has not worked before or indeed has worked since. The birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago was a special moment, and there were many voices talking about this moment, getting people ready for it to happen. And over Advent, we've heard those voices. We've heard from the prophets many, many years before the birth of Jesus, bringing to us God's promise that God would one day journey with us in flesh and bone to live the life we live. We've heard from the angels. Angels talking to parents, getting Zachariah and Elizabeth ready for a special baby boy, to be called John the prophet, to prepare the way for the Messiah, the Christ, the one that will save us from our foolish ways. And the angels talking to more parents, getting Joseph and Mary ready for their role, the journey that the angels prepare Mary and Joseph for would have required many pairs of sandals as they parent God in the early years. And what a hard journey for them as they pick their moments with God's help for where will be safe for them and their child. Will it be Judah? Will it be Bethlehem? Will it be Egypt? Will it be Nazareth? Right from the beginning, Jesus was a refugee. And then we hear the angels tonight talking to the shepherds, encouraging the shepherds to go and testify to this new thing that God is doing. In our journey through Advent to the birth tonight, we see God's amazing plans come to birth as God risks all to be with us. The birth of Jesus reminds us that no matter how lonely we might feel, God goes to great lengths to journey with us. This Christmas, may you pause and remember that God is with you. Amen.
we admit that there is something so marvellous and wonderful about this night. We want to share this hope with the people who had imagined that this year would be different, that this year would have what they were looking for. We want to share this night with families who couldn't afford to put much under the tree, as well as for those who are new to this country, fleeing a life that is unsafe or unwelcoming. We don't want to bottle up the speciality of this night. We want to share it. We want to pour your good news all over this community. We want to sing like Mary sang, until all who are looking for you have found their way home. So help us, like the shepherds who weren't afraid to go and tell the good news. Help us take the words of the angels to our heart to not be afraid. Help us to be as trusting as Joseph, who chose to believe the impossible. But more than anything, give us the courage and conviction to tell this story. In a hurting world so desperate for hope, we have something to say. Joy and hope are in the air so thick we could almost bottle it up. But we don't want to bottle up the feeling, we want to share it. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Up the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth, and blessing mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, all the nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels say.
place may you go knowing that from generation to generation we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation God has been by our side. From generation to generation you are not alone. The God of yesterday, the God of tomorrow, knows you by name, loves you and calls you forth saying, go be the person you are called to be. Love wildly, do justice and come back soon. May it be so. Amen.